Rudiger and Lori and together we, we are, are Lori Squared. Squared. Welcome to our Where's Waldo Social Distancing Edition. As you can see, our friend Waldo is six feet apart from his friends as are Lori and I. Welcome to COVID times, people. <laughs> <laughs> now it's good to be back. It is good to be back. And we're able to be within six feet of each other, so that's nice. Yes. So we are back and we are here to teach you a little something about something you all have asked for. In one of our recent staff meetings, Malikita presented on the Jamboard and by popular demand everybody wanted to know more about it and how to use it. So Malikita kindly filmed herself doing a video and is walking us through step by step on how to use it. So that is what our feature is for this month. The Jamboard is a free digital whiteboard that allows you to interact with your students remotely. Since we've had to now go remote and work with our parents and our students, it gives you a way to kind of interact where the student can become involved while you're watching and vice versa. You can also send homework to your students and allow them to do it um, with you. This is a versatile tool that you can also use with not only low vision students, your preschool CVI children, but um, your children that have multiple disabilities can also use this Jamboard and you can create anything to any child's ability. So we hope that you will enjoy the video segment that Malikita put together for us and try one of the um, ideas or make your own Jamboard and, um, and share. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can open a share folder so everybody can share their ideas. That would be fantastic. Until next time. Until next time. Bye. Hello there, you guys. Today I want to show you how to create a Jamboard. But before we create one, I want to share with you some of the Jamboards that I've already created. So this is how we get to Jamboard. You go into your Google Apps, scroll all the way down, and there is Jamboard and you click on it. Real simple. I have a lot of Jamboards, some successful ones, some a little you know, but they vary. Um, I'll show you a couple that I have that have been fun. I've done a find and search. I actually downloaded this one from Highlights. And you can move them around a little bit. Let me shrink it. I had to, you can make them bigger or smaller by um, clicking on these arrows. Let me slide it down. And so for this kiddo, we had to stretch it out. And we can use some of the bottom, but you can also just figure out what you want them to find. Like maybe the scarecrow, that's how wonderful it is. And you can have them color. So this is one I did with a kid, um, an older kid, a preschooler, but it was fun for him. We counted pumpkins and the different things. And so you can use the eraser to erase the Jamboard. Um, that was also a, these are ones he's done, completed um, another version of Find a Fish. And as you can see, he found them and he colored all of them in on his end. And that's the beauty of the Jamboard. Once you share with the family, they have access to it. And um, they can add and take away things as well. We also worked on the letter A. And you can see this was just a regular ditto I had on my desktop that I loaded up into the computer. Um, here's another one. And you can do it for kids at all ages and levels. Um, it works great on the iPad or any touch screen. Um, if they have to use the mouse, it's a little different and harder for them. So it's better with touch screens. I have one for visual patterns for a kid that I was working with. And a good thing about the Jamboards is that you can also go up there, download as a PDF, and you can um, print it out or make a copy or save as a frame. So this kiddo um, actually was able to move them back. Um, it was really fun, different patterns you can make. 
um, almost anything created the dinosaur one. Uh, we also was working on letters A. Just want to show you some different ideas before we create one. I did a five little pumpkins on a gate theme. Um, this was actually the last part, but it was fun for that kid. We did the song along with it. We started out with the pumpkin. The order switched um, to pumpkins. We actually, before I go back, you can also do big and little. Uh, work on kids learning and moving things from left to right, um, top and bottom. You can almost, whatever you're thinking and you want, I use it as a supplement, this would be something useful and helpful for your kiddos. Um, we worked on apples, we worked on pumpkins, and so we were able to pull this up and we worked on visual discrimination. Um, I like to sometimes use this for guidance. It's just like a laser and help guide. You can add more items. So this is one. It was find the pumpkins. Um, and I think specifically was find the pumpkins at the top of the screen. So, and I'm just erasing. And the good thing is some of my jam boards I've shared with friends and families and they've gotten shared and shared. So sometimes more than just my kiddos may work on one of my jam boards. Find the snowman in some visual clutter. This was fun. We, I did this around in January. And so my kiddo had to find a different snowman. Size is important, or the snowflakes. And also, something as simple as put the hat on top of the snowman's head was what we did. And then the kids get to color. And so you can make the snowman bigger or smaller. And one of the reasons I used this was to create a little more visual clutter um, so that that kiddo had to do a little more work. We did Moose Valentine. I did this with the speech therapist. And this was our follow up routine after we did the audiobook. And she had coloring pages at home. And then we had um, some discrimina visual discrimination. This went along with my big red barn. We worked on putting the animals in the front of the barn or on top of the barn. Um, we've been working on top and bottom and front. So that was an example. Oh, and visual discrimination. Can you find the horse? Can you apple tree? So you can see, you can put the apples. Sorry about that. Put the apples in the basket, put the apples on the tree, put a little apple on the bottom of the tree. How many apples in the tree? What color are the apples? Great contrast. Um, and then you can print them out. They look great when you print out as well. So I use this one for a couple of kids. Um, you made the car small and he was able to use his finger and move the car straight across, move the car down and up. Uh, this actually is completed. We worked on moving cars to one side, big and little concept, older kid, of course, preschooler. Um, and I would say sometimes this is really just support in the concept that we are already working with. And then you find that a lot of the kids enjoy digital stuff. So this one, he had to find the car in the different, and I'm gonna show you how to find some of the backgrounds. I must say, since COVID starts, some of the images I used to have access to are now licensed and they're hard to get access to. So some are like the Daniel Tiger, the um, a lot of the book themes, and you can work around it 
but um, it's not as easy as it used to be. This is one of my favorite. Where's the Christmas tree? One of my earlier ones. Um, we had to find the Christmas tree in all this visual clutter and Christmassy stuff. I'm going to show you the board we're going to make. Um, I am currently doing Dare Zoo with some of my kids. And so I had to find all the images, but they were, we were doing her locating. Sorry, I put the words on the box. I'll show you how to do that. And then I gotta move it back. Like figuring out after we read the audio, we had to read out loud. It was an audio version. And so these are our different, you know, Dare Zoo animals. And then we had to find our animals in the more visual complex. It was hard for her to find the frog and the snake, of course, because they blended. Um, she had to really look and find the lion. But it was a wonderful exercise for her. There's the coloring sheet. And so I will, this coloring sheet is, um, I had purchased and download like I did the other ditto. So let's, this is how we start. We hit our plus sign and our slide. So let's, let's talk about the things that are here. So this is how you create a slide, a frame, like a PowerPoint. Um, these magnification, the zoom in, undo. Set background, change the colors, um, and you can clear the frame. Here's our pen, the pen, the marker, highlighter, paintbrush, and choose colors. This is our eraser. This is a select. This is what you will need to move an object around. Sticky notes, so you can write into sticky notes. Um, this is where we pick our images. You can load them up from here, camera, Google search, Google Drive, Google Photos. Over here, great. You can add shapes, um, color for the shapes. And then here's text, text bar, just like you would do normally, letter size and how you format and display your text. And this is our highlighter. So what I did originally was, I'm gonna start our search. So what I found out is that because a lot of things are licensed, you cannot just pull them out of the Google. I did look for, I typed in Dear Zoo, and it'll have, you know, some stuff will pop up, but you would think when you put that in, not the book, right? Um, Dear Zoo book characters. Yeah. So unfortunately, before I could put in characters, when I first started doing this, type in certain things and the characters would just pop up. And I could use them so now people are a lot more strict about what you can use and so we will create we will use our book so i tried all of those and this is what came up And so what I did was I took my book that I already had and we went over and I found the all the pictures. So I typed in elephant first. And the pictures in our book were more like clip art. So I typed in elephant clip art. And then I looked at all the animals I liked. I liked this one. I had the highest movements and the highest contrast. And so I added that. So here's my elephant. Let's see. Just put my elephant there. Let's see what other animals we want to use. 
Real easy, type in what you did as a lion. All the lion pictures. I'm going to use this one. And you can always use the images you have if you have on your computer or store. So I use lion. Let's see. We need a giraffe. Click, insert. Giraffe, snake. And there's the snake I would like to use. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to give you an idea. Because I realize it's going to take forever. So you get the idea. So I have all the animals I want. So let's talk about some of the little things you can do. You can enlarge them by pulling out the tab. You can rotate them. Sometimes you can rot that rotates it, like shifts it to one side normally. You can also duplicate it. Delete. Um, order. So bring to the front or bring forward. And so right now we don't have to use it, but I'll show you when you will have to use it. So we have our little animals here. So you can leave it like that and just have them find and point to the animal or you can be crafty and let's find some boxes to imitate our book. I'm going to do a green wood box, see what I get. All the different boxes that came up when I typed in green. Nothing was green. But this is the box I actually used for the elephant. And so it's there. So let's use order. I'm going to use order for the elephant. Give me a second. It's short. So let's see. Bring to the front. So when I hit bring to the front, I'm able to put the elephant in front front of the box send to the back now he's behind the box there we go and then I want to write in my words let's see I'm gonna move the text box over these are things that we already do and type in very heavy if you want to you don't have to. So I'm, you be careful. I'm clicking on the box. I meant to click on that part or move over. So I have very heavy. My elephant, like our story. And so you can put all the bo animals behind different boxes, like in a story. And then this was my page two. I want to create a background. Because I want to work on locating animals within that visual clutter. So I am going to go to Google search. I'm going to type in zoo. Let's see what I get. So these are the backgrounds I got for the zoo. For just typing in zoo. Scrolled until I found what I wanted. And then I set that as my frame. And so now this is my frame. And you saw that I used a frame in the um, one with the cars. I used the playground frame. So there's tons of frames you could use um, to make different pictures. Here is the background I use. So let's get some animals in there. You can go copy from the page before, but I want to show you. There go our same elephant. Copy, insert. I'm going to put our elephant at the bottom of the screen. 
And one of the things I tell parents when using this, make sure you can put it where you can describe it sometimes. Like, um, especially when we're working on positions and space, um, spatial concepts. Uh, this He's at the bottom of our screen or he's under the tree or on the tree. And that also helps with them locating things. So here's our elephant. I want to put the green things that were in there, like our frog that I didn't put in. Frog. This was the frog I used in the first one, so I insert our frog. I can make him as big as I want or as little, so depending on what you feel like you're working with the kid. But I'm going to put this frog over or on over our elephant. Or you want to be funny, you can put them on top. But I'm going to put them over. I'm going to add a snake, a green snake. So here's our green snake. This is the snake I use. And you don't have to use the same Im images. It's up to you. You know, this is what you want to work on. You can throw in a couple of them. You can work on counting. I'm going to put that little snake here. Should I make him a little bigger? There we go. I will add the lion. I'm going to go with this lion. I'm going to make him itty bitty, itty bitty lion walking in the jungle and so you can add different images so that it'll work out whichever way you want and so I'm going to add maybe a coloring page so here we go let's see coloring pages lion so you want it to be as specific as it can you you know or you can just look and see what comes up so we're gonna find see if I can find a, a lion I don't see one that I want to use they're all so detailed okay, for kids Mm, a little more kid friendly. We got a sea lion. I found an elephant that I like. And then we're going to insert that. And. And so the kiddo, if you wanted to do a coloring page, you can make it bigger. And then they can color. Mm -hmm. Nice little elephant with their fingers. I'm coloring with my track pad, but you understand. So, there are some activities. So, I'm going to title this Dare Do Two. And so, now we're going to go back and I'm just going to show you with my original Dare Zoo. I actually used this with a kid, actually, two kids. I only use this page with one kit. And so here's the other page that I showed you. And so here's our coloring page. I had to pull up from here. So I'm going to show you how I did that one. Add an image. Upload. And so I'm going to browse. 
So that was a coloring page I had, dear Zoo. This is, it is not supported. So that was not the right one. Let me go. And you'll get that a lot for the ones that have the license. Even though you, let me see. There's the one. So there's the one I made with the images similar. I didn't make, I'm sorry. I got this from um, DearZoo.com. And so this one isn't as easy to color for our kids unless you're really working with someone with the ability to really color some fine detail. That's as big as I can make it. So that was a ditto that I added, but it was saved on my computer. Sometimes you can get the coloring page from a drawing. Here's a giraffe. So that was also something I learned that I can find coloring pages through drawings. Any questions or anything, please feel free to contact me. Um, it's really fun um, and exciting. I guess I can show you some of the other stuff. We did a scavenger hunt. Um, this was for a particular kid. We mom took pictures and sent me the pictures and I uploaded her pictures and she went and they were taken where the items were for the most part. Some of them were and then she had to find them. And um, she was able to print this sheet out where she was able to carry her tablet around or mom showed her and she found the different items. That was really fun. This is a really great um, jam board. We used some peck signs in this one. Um, she had to make a choice for what she wanted to do. So goal was to initiate the start of our session. We wanted to give her visuals and she was more interested in the iPad than the peck system. Um, we gave her a choice of which song she wanted to hear. And then we did the Hungry Caterpillar as her story. And then all done. So we used the PEX, we were able to add the PEX card and do all done, her story. So this um, Jamboard was used as a uh, calendar, um, well, a schedule, I'm sorry, a schedule to let her know where we were at each step. And so it was really fun. And so you can do something as simple as that. But now let me show you so how things have changed since then. Let's see if we can even find an image for the Hungry Caterpillar. So here are the images. When I first started doing it, there were tons of images. Um, but it's hard to find as many as there were before. Um, when you type in activities, they just show different things. But So you can use your Jamboard um, that was for that specific kid to do almost anything. We did a Thanksgiving one. Match the turkeys. Where is the turkey? Find the turkeys on um, the clutter. I added a lot of visual clutter. Um, this was fun. Put the turkey feathers on the turkey. And so you can find all these pieces. We had to put the whole turkey together. Um, so it started out, well, here's the turkey. <laughs> And then we had the pieces everywhere. This is just an example. T for turkey. Every page is not meant for every kid. Some things are what parents may have suggested as well. And um, that was our 
for this kiddo, we discussed what we would, would do next. So we just kind of gave her a visual of what would, what would be next. So you can do a lot with the Jamboards.